Welcome everyone to this conversation that precedes the performance of the New Budapest Orpheum Society's Kristallnacht commemoration in 2020. We're especially uh, fortunate to have with us today uh, uh, an alum, a PhD alum from the University of Chicago, uh, Professor Michael Figueroa, who is Assistant Professor of Music, Faculty Fellow at the Institute for Arts and Humanities this fall, and coordinator of the Faculty of Color and Indigenous Faculty Group at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Mike is even more appropriately a part of this conversation because of his own work on commemoration, especially a recent volume on performing commemoration uh, that he co-edited with his colleague Annegret Fauser at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Uh, Mike, welcome back to Chicago. Uh, it's an honor to be back at the institution where I really found music studies and Jewish studies uh, in my own way, made my own pathway through there. So Chicago means a lot to me. And so it's an honor to, to return to the stage, however virtual it may be at this time. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I wonder if you have any thoughts about, especially now that your, your, your edited volume has appeared and that you are, you are having responses, you've been thinking about the question of commemoration, uh, of events, of, of moments of trauma like the Kristallnacht. Uh, we're on the eve of Kristallnacht, which is why we, we are performing uh, and, and recording this, this concert. Yes, yeah, so um, we have, I think, many different kinds of topics to cover on this subject, but I'll say that um, the project that you referenced emerged because the thought occurred to my, my collaborator, Annegret Fauser and me, that not all commemorative practice or commemorative performance is necessarily helpful or good. Um, and that there are a range of possibilities for commemorative um, expressive behavior of various kinds. Um, commemoration takes so many different shapes and forms and has different kinds of poetics of agents with differing agendas. And so we really wanted to capture the diversity of commemorative performance and the performance of commemoration on a global scale. And uh, Kristallnacht, of course, fits into that um, in many ways um, as, as a, um, an often commemorated and, and observed, in fact, an annually commemorated and observed uh, moment of trauma, as you mentioned, um, and the range of, of possibilities for commemorating that moment of trauma um, is also um, quite expansive. Um, and so the, the intervention that you and the New Budapest or Fam Society uh, make uh, is uh, quite extraordinary, um, in my opinion. And I, I really look forward to seeing what, how the performance turns out uh, for this year's Kristallnacht. You you've watched us over many years and listened to our CDs. And I wonder if you have any thoughts as a, as a sort of an outsider and insider observer about the ways in which we've become more responsive, we've changed, we've really uh, thought in new ways about what it is we do when we perform as a, after all, as a cabaret ensemble that specializes in, in Jewish traditions of cabaret. Certainly, yes. I, no, I've, I've seen you perform for the last, I don't know, dozen years or so um, in, in various places, including at U Chicago, but also in other continents even. And um, one thing I'll say is um, I, as an audience member, I very much appreciate the documentary ethos that sometimes comes with the performances, I, both as a scholar and as someone thinking about the ethics and the ethical imperative of commemoration as it may take, uh, as it may have in this case. And so it is, you know, you, for example, your role as narrator or even individual vocalists who, who bring uh, these historical subjects who are actually experiencing the trauma to life using their own voices. You speak with the voices of, of these people rather than with Phil Bowman's voice when you're performing. Um, and so that makes it very powerful indeed. Um, is a kind of 
not quite a reenactment perhaps, uh, but as a kind of, of dignifying the ex expressive potential of the words of those who are going through the trauma being commemorated through lifting up their voices in so many words. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, this is something, of course, we try to do, and it's one of the things that we do as we, we do scholarly work as, as, a, as an ensemble. Um, in fact, as the ensemble in residence of the humanities division, um, we look for these voices, we find these voices. Um, we're sensitive also to the ways in which we try to add to those voices. Um, one of the things we do, for example, when we perform is take original material that, that, that had its, its own place of origin, those who, who gave it voice originally, originally. And then we, we, we take it through a process of translation, which is really to say a translation that aims to, toward transcendence, but it's something, that's something which we actually can't bring about ourselves. Um, I wonder, are, are there ways in which you think in recent years, I mean, one of the Kristallnacht is, is now uh, 82 years ago. It's those who were witnesses at the time. Uh, few of them are, are, are still with us. Um, many of them are, have, have not shared their, their stories with us. Some of them begin to share their stories even more at this point in, in as, as Kristallnacht in 1938 begins to recede farther into history. How does, how does in your experience with commemorations, how does this, this, this change over time, this, this idea that, that, that history itself begins to intervene, uh, potentially silencing voices, how does this affect the the ways in which we seek to commemorate now in 2020? I think this, this is a really excellent provocative question because of course, in the end history silences all voices, right? This is something that we're doomed as knowing as human subjects. And, um, and it raises the question of whether, um, what, what kinds of value the, the uh, commemorations take on over time as people who actually witnessed the events in question uh, begin begin to die or the, you know is what does it mean to keep their stories alive what does it mean to transform them or translate them as you put it because um, your your comment your previous comment made me think about the question of to what extent is all commemorative activity ultimately a kind of of fail failure because after all you can't put the glass back in the windows, right? No matter how beautiful the concert is, no matter how methodical the, the, the archival work is, or even the ethnographic work for those who are still living, you can have their testimony. Um, you know, what does it mean to come up against that impossibility of reconstituting the, or, or um, how would you say this? Restoring um, those whose whose lives you're commemorating um, in in these concerts. You know, I guess it's a question um, for for you and for the musicians, really. I mean, one of the one of the things that we think about is the necessity of continuing to do it. Um, in in the course of a year, we at the University of Chicago, we we try to have two commemoration concerts performances, I would call them, um, one for Kristallnacht and one for Yom HaShoah um, in, in the spring. And both of these, in a certain sense, are, are a process of continuing to do it. In other words, letting the voices continue to be heard, letting, letting them not be silenced by saying them again. This was one of the the, the enjoinders, the invocations in, in Nellie Zox's poetry, for example, to, to continue to say, to continue to say. Uh, and in that sense, even though it's impossible perhaps to retrieve the voices, they can still be heard in this way. And this is why I think that the word translation you used is really critical because 
um, as you've, you, you yourself has, have written, um, for example, in your, uh, in your presidential column when, uh, when you were president of the, of the Society for Ethnomusicology um, a series on translation, you know, it, you, it's never a kind of, a, a, a kind of transparent uh, decoding of one language or set of concepts to another, but in fact involves a kind of a creative agency to make, to make uh, in some senses the other, or in this case, the, the, the people whose memories, whose lives you're, you're attempting to retrieve, um, uh, making them audible, making them, um, making them legible uh, for, for other people, for audiences in this case, for learners, right, for students um, who come to the, to the concert hall or the cabaret hall as students. Um, and that made me think about something you said in, a, um, in the American Musicological Society conference panel earlier, uh, and something that you talk about in your essay um, for the aforementioned performing commemoration volume uh, that I co-edited, which is thinking of the cabaret esque as, uh, so, uh, in many ways, but it's something that also um, throws into relief both marked and unmarked temporalities of performance. And so what is, I, I wonder, I, what I take from that formulation of yours is thinking about the, how performance might function in an iterative fashion between marked and unmarked time in the sense of, you know, what are the everyday ramifications of the cabaret-esque and, and the, the performance of commemoration that uh, your ensemble does? Well, we think about this a lot, um, perhaps also to, to draw again on this uh, idea of translation, because we recognize that there's a kind of temporality in which there is an openness, a silence, a space, a space in which the temporality is perhaps waiting to be articulated through music. And when we build a program, for example, the one that, that the audience will hear soon uh, with the recordings, we will, they will understand the, the, the way in which we seek different ways of filling this space. Avoid the word void in this sense, because I think it's a space waiting to be filled, not, not an emptiness that, that, that is in that sense marked as emptiness, but rather it's unmarked uh, as a space that can be filled. So we, the, the repertories that we choose are ones that may not necessarily belong to November 9 uh, and 10, 1938, but ones that once the silence is created, we, we, we seek to fill it and to, to, to give it new meaning, to give it a meaning that has, that's been stolen from it in a way. So we have early songs uh, from the 19 teens from Darius Mio on he based on, on Hebrew texts of in folk songs. We have uh, Hebrew folk songs that are set as art music in Hebrew. Uh, Mio set them in French, uh, but the composers for the Shirei Chalutzim set them in, in a modern Hebrew. Then we have songs from the Polish cabaret in post-war, so a moment of survival. And we bring these together, we weave them together with, with certain types of uh, sounding and sonic glue, such as Yiddish, uh, which, is, which is perhaps the language that, 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 that holds much of this program together. And, 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 and that is a way of, of, of thinking about this space and filling it with a sound that causes us, that arrests our attention to find meaning. I think that's, excuse me, I think that's really well said. And it makes me think of also the way that um, a kind of everydayness fills the, the, uh, the programs that you do, you know, um, these are not all, I mean, in the, the audience of this performance will learn this soon. They're not always all songs that in fact, as you meant, just mentioned, directly ha uh, relate to the event being commemorated, but they show in fact what was lost through humor through love songs, things that, things that serve as a kind of a music historical evidence that these were people whose very beings 
in, in, in their social beings were eradicated through these, these violent actions um, through a violent state apparatus in Nazi Germany. Mike, you thought and researched a great deal um, around the topic and the, the many topics of commemoration, not just in response to the Shoah, but also in, 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 in Israel and, and elsewhere and, and within different Jewish traditions, but also beyond Jewish traditions. And I wonder if you'd, if you'd share with us a few of your thoughts about how commemoration and the performance thereof, it becomes a kind of transnational way of, of, of creating every day. So I mean, this seems to be contradictory almost, that, that, that the everyday would be transnational in, in a certain sense. Uh, but, but perhaps this is the most important thing, one of the things that the important things we can do with commemoration. Certainly, and one area I think about this is, is in uh, my main research site, which is the city of Jerusalem, um, its commemorative landscape is such a, a, a dominant part of sensory experience of being there. Um, and it's very, it's complicated, uh, as many people know. Um, you have different modes of commemoration narrating different views of history, including moments of trauma, all juxtaposed with one another. You have, first of all, obviously different uh, different traditions of Judaism, right? You have, um, and you have various other religious groups, right? With uh, Muslims and Christians of various denominations, but also ethnic groups within those. There's Armenian commemorative practices that are, happen next door to, um, to uh, for example, um, ones that are happening in the Christian quarter and in the Jewish quarter and the calendars, the commemorative calendars sometimes are out of sync, but sometimes align in really interesting ways where you can have um, a very rich soundscape of commemorative practice, um, all kind of uh, sounds vibrating and reverberating off one another um, in a landscape that itself is built to commemorate various narratives of history. Um, there's, and they are also, by the way, uh, very, different, um, very different practices of commemoration between official and unofficial mm -hmm. actors, right? Um, so for example, um, Yom Yerushalayim is a national holiday uh, for, for Israeli Jews um, that uh, originally was meant to, uh, and that's Jerusalem Day in, Hebrew, in English, uh, was meant to commemorate the unification of Jerusalem as a result of the Six Day War of 1967, the unification of the city under Israeli rule. Um, and it has evolved over the past um, six decades um, as a kind of, or five decades rather, as a kind of um, um, right-wing holiday that um, is very controversial among Israelis themselves. Um, and, uh, for and so what, what many leftist Israelis um, argue, for example, is that um, Yom Yilu Shalayim is, is not commemorating Jerusalem specifically, but commemorating occupation. At the same time, it's filled with beautiful, well-attended concerts with some of the, the top marquee names in the uh, Israeli music, uh, classical and popular music industry, um, giving this uh, very controversial political message a very beautiful musical valence. And so the question is, what do you do with commemorative activities that may be harmful, but that are aesthetically beautiful? How do you grapple with this, this um, conceptual dissonance as a scholar um, and also as, as a musician who is doing who are, is doing interesting stuff with this repertoire. So these are some of the questions that I think about in my own research on how Israeli musicians have shaped uh, territorial uh, concepts and discourse among uh, in, in Israeli history since over the long 20th century. I mean, one of the things we, we know is that uh, perhaps as ethnomusicologists, we know that when we perform music, and especially when we use it in some ways uh, to do memory work, that it, it does political work as well, that it has a political context. Um, it, it becomes a form of political activism, in, in, for example, in Yom Yerushalayim. Um, but there are other ways in which to think about these politics as well. And, and, I, and I'm struck so much by your, your call for 
the, to, un, to respecting and thinking what does it mean that some of this music is really beautiful. Um, I will say that uh -huh. we never, the New Budapest Orpheum Society, never takes to the stage without music when, with, when the music is not beautiful. It's part, of, it's part of what we do. We look for beautiful music. We, we look, it's part of the ways in which we translate through performance is to enhance beauty, not to make it beautiful, but to enhance beauty, to bring it out for, for, for those who, who, uh, who are listening, who are trying to understand it, its meaning. Uh, but this also is a kind of political work, I, 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 I believe, as well. Um, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking even as we perform now in, in, the, in the concert that our listeners will, will hear in a moment, we're very much in a political, at, a, at, a, at a political moment with high stakes. Uh, I don't mean just the fact that the American election has now been resolved. Uh, and but but also we're in in a pandemic, and that pandemic makes our work. It it brings a new pol political perspective to what we do when we commemorate, because th the question of healing, for example, and the need to heal, heal through history, heal through sound, heal through the beauty of the work that we bring. Um, so. In, in, in this sense, I'm wondering whether we're, 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 when we think about commemoration, when we think about even Kristallnacht, in which so much was destroyed and so much beauty wa was, was eliminated, that the politics of what we might do is also to bring back this beauty, to bring back this beauty, not to let it distract from the deeper meanings, but in a sense, to reveal them in new ways. Yeah, I really like that sentiment. Um, and it actually, it, it answers the question of why music should matter in this context anyway. Um, and harnessing the, the use the word transcendence earlier, um, but harnessing the power, the aesthetic power um, of, of the repertories that you, you perform. Um, to do this kind of political work is a very effective way of doing it, right? Um, otherwise, we could just read, if people could just read our <laughs> articles and books and things, um, but um, it doesn't have quite the same kind of immediacy and, and ability to move people. Um, and I also think that the political work that's being done, even though it's not, this isn't the direct subject, um, usually of, of your concerts, not the ones that I've been to, but the, uh, the increasing public spectacle of, of anti-Semitic violence in the world, including in this country, uh, is something that is, provides a political backdrop for the activities of the NBOS. Um, and um, I, I, I don't make a, a comparison of the, the rise of Trumpism after 2016 with the 1930s in Germany. I think that's a very facile, although potentially uh, valuable historical analogy to make, but the fact is, is that these are people whose lives were, were taken from them through similar kinds of rhetoric that we're seeing now. And it's important to draw attention to what that actually means on a human level. And music has a very powerful way of doing this, and this, which is why it's very important to use that power responsibly. That's right, and, and, and that's part of what we owe those who struggled, who lost their lives, to those who, who survived as well. I think when you, I, it occurred to me when you made the comparison between 2020 and the 1930s, um, the way in which so much of our repertory, the, uh, the New Budapest Orpheum Society, comes from the 1930s and 1940s. In other words, comes from the Shoah, um, mm. comes from performance in the Shoah, and was created at moments um, in which uh, it was a, a type of resistance, a type of a way of forestalling the inevitability sometimes of, of, of death. Uh, one in our newest, in the, in the CD project that we're now working on, we were thinking very much about this music that, that was created uh, during the 19th the 30s and 1940s. Um, 
Christine Wilkie Bowman, my, my, my wife, and I will perform the Victor Ullmann uh, Die Weise von Liebe und Tod des Kornets Christoph Rilke, the love death of the flag bearer Christoph Rilke, which was the final work for the stage uh, in a concentration camp, a work of tremendous beauty, a tremendous beauty, um, but it will occupy a position to filling this space of the political, of the depth of meaning, of experience, of the, of the possibility of transcendence, but also sometimes the futility of, of transcendence uh, as, as well. And so this is part of our project, part of what we're trying to do with, with the, the repertory that everyone will hear now in a few moments, uh, and part of what we continue to do as the New Budapest Orpheum Society. Mike, I want to thank you for joining us today. It, 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 it means a great deal uh, to have you back with us. Um, in so it, it makes me think that you never left, and, um, and, but I know that you've, you, you've thought so much about these things, and uh, for us it's a privilege to, to be learning from you now. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, and the privilege is all mine. Thank you for entrusting me with this very important topic um, for this very important performance, and I can't not wait to hear what you all do with it. Thanks, Mike. And everyone, uh, you'll, in just a few moments, you'll, you'll hear our performance, and we want to thank you for joining us for this conversation and for the Kristallnacht commemoration that now follows. Kuma Echa, rise, O oh brethren. Kuma Echa, sova, sova, alten du chashu, chashu, en kan rosh ve, en kan sof, yad el yad alta zor, yom shakab, yom yizra, am nu tefer nach elach, min hakvar u min hakrach, macher meshuva nach, yom shakab, yom yizra, am nu tefer songs by Darius Mio from his group Bohème Juif. This first one is Chant du Nourrice, which means the song of the nurse. It's a lullaby.
by Darius Millo. This is Chant du Laboureur, the song of the worker. Lamentation, a lamentation, telling of the seven angels surrounding the throne of God, weaving the robes for the return of the Messiah. Thank <laughs> you. 
Two songs by Mordechai Gebertig, the Yiddish bard of Krakow, who left us wonderful songs and poems about the ordinary people, the ordinary lives of Jewish people in Krakow. First, Rezele. <laughs> Drinnen auf dem Beutenstiebel wohnt mein Teil Reisele. Jeden Abend mit Farben heißen, dreh ich sich herum. Ich gebe Pfeifen, ruf euch Reisel, komm, komm. Öffnen sich auf Fenster, wacht euch salta Heisele. Und bald klingt im stillen Gessel, als ist Kohl's Red Reisele. Noch eine Weile wart mein Lieber, bald will ich sein frei. Grüß ich noch ein Rummel über ein, zwei, drei. Geh ich mir auf Redecher, sing und knack mir ein Nisselech. Herr ich auf der Treppe springen, ihre drobne Füße weg. Schön auf den letzten Treppe, ich nehm sie lieber rum. Ich gebe still a kuschen Keppel, krumm, krumm, krumm. Ich will der Sogen dove do, sonst der Reuf nicht pfeifen mehr. Er, er pfeift schon so die Mame, sie ist froh, es verdreht sie sehr. Pfeifen soll sie, ist nicht jiddisch, passt es bloß versehen. Gib a Zeichen, Prost auf jiddisch, eins, zwei. Drei Techtelech, three daughters. Wenn ich will mit Masel gesund erleben, das erste Techtel mir will neues geben. Oi will ich tanzen, mir hop hop. Oi, er op an Olf und Kopf. Oi, will ich tanzen, oi, will ich tanzen, er op an Olf und Kopf. Spielt es morgen, spielt mit Leben, 
das erste Mädel hat euch ein Geus gegeben. Uns geblieben noch mädlich zwei. Oi, wie halt mein Schäumbar sein. Spürt es morgen, nehmt die Gläser ein. So die ganze Welt mit uns sich freien. Unser Simcher weist nur ein Gott. Und in der was Techter Gott. Und ich will sehen, schon das zweite Mädel. Ungeton in weißen Kippekleidel. Oi, will ich trinken und freilich sein. Oi, er auf in Harza stehen. Oi, will ich trinken, oi, will ich trinken. Er auf in Harza stehen. Spielt es morgen, heut tun und schneiden. Das zweite Mädel gibt mir äußern Frieden. Das mir Sinnekel noch haben wir. Oi, wie halt mein Schein bei ihr. Spielt es morgen, fahr uns mit der Ton hin. So war lebt und euch am Ohr gab es an ihm. A Kind euch gegeben, oi Gott in you. Und am Mädel noch der zu. Und wenn beim letzten Ich will spielen, Herren, will ich etwas treuig stehen und klären. Hoi, das letzte Techterl ist schon euch weg. Hoi, was noch ist du der Zweck? Hoi, das letzte Techterl ist schon weg. Hoi, was noch ist du der Zweck? Spielt es morgen, besetzt die Kalle. So genommen uns die Kinder alle, schwer gewähnt uns Techter drei, hoi schwerer noch ein See. Spielt es morgen, mal euch uns trägen, das letzte Bettel wird ein Kledig werden. Heute das ganze Stiebe, ihr Kledelschank, hoi weh es mir wie Pust und Bahn. Oi, das ganze Stiebel, ihr Kleidelschank, oi, weh es mir wie Brust und Bank. Das Redele dreht sich. The wheel, it turns. Das Reidele dreht sich, das Reidele dreht sich, es dreht sich herauf und herauf. Das Reidele dreht sich, das Reidele dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht ab. Gewehr. Und heint ist das ganze Vermögen bei mir, weil das Rädele dreht sich, das Rädele dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht ab. Ich kenne ein Gewehr, er ist reich und ein Schier und ein roter Saab und begelt. Er lebt nicht, er starrt nicht, er geht nicht, er steht nicht, er meint, dass er rot schon in die Welt. Es wird kommen der Tog, der zu ihm seiner klug und die Rot wird sich unheben drehen. Was tockt das er Leben und nehmen nicht geben, der Fall sing ich ihm den Refrain. Das Redele dreht sich, das Redele dreht sich, es dreht sich herauf und herab. Das Reidele dreht sich, das Reidele dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht ab. Merken, dass die Gorge weiner gewirr und heint ist das ganze Vermögen bei mir. Weil das Reidele dreht sich, das Reidele dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht ab. Mir läuft mir 
juckt sich, mein stutzt sich und schluckt sich. Es ist eine Mischung in der Welt. Nimmt mein schöne Zippe, ein Weib und ein Klippe, nur sie hat weiss mir ein Sachgeld. Sie hat Ambitions, sie macht Propositions, sie bleiben mit mir gar allein. Sie hat und erzählen, kein Geld wird nicht fehlen, und ich sing ihr auch dem Refrain. Das Rädel dreht sich, das Rädel dreht sich, es dreht sich herauf und herab. Das Rädel dreht sich, das Rädel dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht auf. Nächten ist die Kind geworden, aber wie? Und heint ist das ganze Vermögen bei mir. Weil das Rädel dreht sich, das Rädel dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht auf. Vermögen bei mir, weil das Rädel dreht sich, das Rädel dreht sich, es dreht sich und stellt sich nicht auf. Mein Schwester Chaye, my sister Chaye, a Yiddish poem by Survivor Binnen Heller with music by Chava Alberstein. Mein Schwester Chaye mit den grünen Augen, mein Schwester Chaye mit den schwarzen Zähnen. Die Schwester Chaye, wo sollt mich der Zeugen, aufs Motsche Gas in Häus mit Krumme Tränen. Die Mama ist auch weg vom Schnug beginnen, wenn auf den Himmel hat er Sträum gehört. Sie ist auch weg in Kroma rein verdienen, das bitt ne drob ne Grosche die Gegend. Und Chaya ist geblieben mit dem Friede, und sie hat sich gekommen und gegeht. Und sie fleht singen, seit die schöne Lieder, vor Nacht, wenn kleine Kinder werden. Mein Schwester Chaye mit den grünen Augen, mein Schwester Chaye mit den langen Ohren, mein Schwester Chaye, wo sollte mich der Zeugen, ist noch nicht alt gewesen, kein Sendling hier. Sie hat geräum gekocht, der langt das Essen. Sie hat gezwungen uns die kleine Kerb. Nur spielen sich mit uns, hat sie vergessen. Die Schwester Chaye mit die schwarze Zerb. Ein Schwester Chaye mit die heugen Grüne hat dein Schott in Tröpplinke sie verbrennt. Und ich bin in der Medine, der same letzte, wo soll sie gekennt. Schreib ich auf Jiddisch meine Lieder in täglich Schreckliche von unserer Zeit. Bei Gott allein ist sie ja was Gerede. In Himmel sitzt sie bei sein rechter Seid. Fahr ich, schreib ich auf Jiddisch meine Lieder 
in Tag die Schreckliche von unserer Zeit. Bei Gott allein sie ja was ihr Hiebe, in Himmel sitzt sie bei sein rechter Seid. Ei, 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 ja. songs by Paul Gasol. The first one is Die Freunde. selection is a movement from the cantata by Gasol. It's called um, Das Verhör des Lupulus. It is a state work by Bertolt Brecht. This movement uh, showcases the fisher woman who's telling the story of waiting for her son, Faba, to return from the wars in Asia. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fieber. Und im Fieber suchte ich nun meinen Sohn. Und tiefer suchend trau ich mir. Und dann gestorben kam ich hier im Schattenreich und suchte weiter. Fort ich, fort, denn das war sein Mord. Und ich lief und lief durch Schatten, um vorbei an Schatten hin zu schatten. Sie nicht mehr begehen, seitdem sie den blutigen Krieg erließen. Mein Rufen blieb weg hier im Kamen. This last selection by Paolo de Sao is from his Deutsches Miserere. Ali Bear, Ascend My Well, by Paul Dessau. Thank you. 
Tel Aviv, La Midbar, by Stefan Volpe. La Midbar, sa'enu al da be'shot kemadim, al sa'vrehem yitzatzenu pa'amonim gedorim. Sa'enu, sa'enu, la Midbar, sa'enu, 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 la Midbar, Thank you. 
Ke Katsovich. Warsha, Warsaw, by Ben Zion Wittler. In Harzen du bei mir brennt a fire with Dengus Isabel. Kach mal me und in Nalivke, hoi di smoche und in Lajinke, un chasidem lech, negidem lech, zioniste lech, bundiste lech, gestrebt ob n dorpen, gorna nek. Hab nicht vergessen noch bis heim, Und der Fahr so ich zu dir mit Wetter und Nachschir. Warsche mein, die bist doch gewähnt, a jüdische Stadt wie schön. Warsche mein, die bist doch gewähnt, viel Schleimelech und Schleimelech, Leib und Streim und Aschir. Fabrikelech, Melechelech, Gedurrelech und Schielechlech, Neuf gebäut haben wir. Hoch mein Kultur, zerhoben als ein Jahr, Wie schön ein jüdisch Leben wird's gewöhnt. Warsche mein, du bist doch gewöhnt. Jewish Warsaw, 
I can see it before my eyes with the quiet streets and the crooked houses and the Jewish children, each one a marvel. They lived there, they played there, they strived there, and they gave us such nachas, such joy. Nicht vergessen noch bis heut. Du sollst zu dir getun der Feind. Der Feind, so geh ich zu dir, wird weite Gunaschir. Warsche mein. Is doch gewähnt, a jüdische Stadt in die Schöne. Warsche mein, die bist doch gewähnt, viel mit jüdischem Grün. Der Grün in Kern, Bäumelech, vielleicht Mäuschelech, in Schleumelech, Leben und Streben und Aschir. Fabrikelech, Melichelech, Gedurmelech, in Schielechlech, auf dem Boot am Meer. Och, mein Kultur, zerrum als ein Jahr, wie schön dein jüdisch Leben ist gewöhnt. Warsche, mein, die bist doch gewöhnt, viel mit jüdischen Leben. Bleib gesund, mir Krocke. Another song by Mordechai Gebertig. Farewell, Krakow. Bądź mi zdrow, Krakowie, Krakowie, bleib gesund, czeka na mnie furka pora iść, wróg mnie wygnał z domu, goni mnie jak psa, wróg okrutni zabić chce mój świat. Bleib gesund, mir Krocke, ich seh sie hübsche Heint, zuletzt der Mund mit Angst, was lieb ist mir. Doch mein Name ist Käme, zart sich heus gewöhnt, schwer gewöhnt, du scheint sich mit ihr. Heus gewöhnt, Bleib gesund, mir Krocke, ewig ist deine Tate Mame, du bist doch in dir. Leben sei zu leben, ist mir nicht verschält. Zwarte Käfer, er geht's weit auf mir. Bleib gesund, mir Krocke, bleib ja mir gesund. Zwart die Fuhr gespannt, schon in Fahr mein Reus. Streit der Wilder Säule, die mit Treib der Hund. Mittag soll es mich vor.